Hello, I'm Mac. I'm the Regional Manager Rural for Fire and Emergency New Zealand for the Canterbury region. During the Port Hills fire, I worked with aircraft initially and then was appointed an incident controller. And today I want to talk about this fire, its intensity and its impact on Christchurch. The size and intensity of this fire was unprecedented for its impact on a large city in New Zealand. If you think about 1600 rugby fields, that's about the size of this fire. The intensity of this fire at times reached the equivalent energies of three to four atom bombs. Or if you look at the fire line, that's roughly 100,000 kilowatts per metre of fire. That's 100,000 one bar heaters per metre of fire line. That's the kind of intensities that our firefighters were facing and had to deal with. That fire intensity is driven by the terrain, the fuels and the weather leading up to and during the fire event. The terrain in the Port Hills is steep, rolling gullies into 20, 25 degree slopes. For every 10 degrees of slope, a fire is going to double its speed and intensity. And here we had incised gullies where the fire was at times burning faster than people could run. The fuels that were burning were intense. Dried out gorse, manuka, kanuka, even the pine trees that you see being, being felled behind us. All of those would exhibit intense fire behaviour in the dry conditions. And those dry conditions are a result of the weather. The weather leading up to the fire was dry. It was a typical Canterbury late summer. We had about half of our rainfall for the month that we would normally expect. We had a strong westerly wind blowing. And when you add those things together, the terrain, the fuels and the weather, it created the intensity of fire that we saw. Early Monday evening, we received multiple one-on-one -on -one calls to a fire here in Early Valley Road. Trucks were immediately dispatched, but en route, the officer in charge noticed it was a large developing fire. He immediately ordered more appliances and also two helicopters. On the way into the fire, one of the pilots noticed people were trapped ahead of the fire and went in and rescued them. By eight o'clock that night, the rural fire officer and two area commanders on site overflew the fire for reconnaissance. They determined to pull their crews back, leaving a night patrol crew on site. However, at 2am on Tuesday morning, the fire re-intensified. Crews were brought back in with the specific task of saving property and homes. They achieved that goal. By first light Tuesday morning, we were able to bring the helicopters back onto this fire to work with ground crews and heavy machinery. Later that day, we had to suspend the aerial operation for about an hour, when tragically, we lost Steve Askin, one of our own and a helicopter pilot who died in a helicopter crash whilst fighting this fire. Our thoughts and prayers are with Steve Askin and his friends and family. Seven o'clock Monday evening, we again received multiple 111 calls, this time to a fire up here on Marley's Hill. Crews were dispatched to what appeared to be a small fire, but it quickly grew into another large fire we had to contend with. The westerly wind that had been blowing all day drove that fire up over this hill and down into Governor's Bay here. Wednesday was the most destructive day on this fire. It's the day we lost the most property and houses. It was the day the civil defence cordons were set up and emergency evacuations undertaken. And the reason for that was for the previous three to four days, the westerly wind behind us blowing up slope. On Wednesday, that wind changed to the northeasterly behind us here. The fact that the fire in Marley's over here and Early Valley over behind us combined that day gave us intense and fast running fire. It got to the point where the two fires combined and were moving, was moving quickly southwest. It was at that point we had to pull our firefighters out. By Thursday morning, our fire crew, heavy machinery and aircraft had finally brought this fire under control near here at Burke's Bush. From then on, it was 60 days of sheer hard graft by everyone involved to finally extinguish this fire across the 1600 hectares of fire ground. We've learned a lot from these Port Hills fires. There are things we've done well, and there are things we need to improve on. The bringing together of 38 different fire agencies into one organisation has already started that process. The three major lessons from this fire is better ways of working together, of firefighter safety, and working more closely with our communities. There's a lot communities need to do in these urban rural areas to keep their homes and properties safe from the threat of fire. Have a defendable space around the home, 10 metres of clear green area is ideal. Have an escape route and know where to meet. Have a known meeting point. And if there is a fire, is there clear access for our heavy tankers and appliances to reach your home? And is there an adequate water supply? And if you do live in these urban rural areas, these are just some of the things you need to think about. 
For more information, go to foreignemergency.nz.